I had thought at the beginning of the year that President Obama had sort of one shot at uh, trying to put forward a fairly explicit and, and somewhat detailed outline of what the United States would support in terms of an Israeli-Palestinian peace settlement. And I thought if he did that, he could then try to mobilize support in the international community. And of course, the Israelis would probably object to uh, most of it. The Palestinians might object to part of it. But at least something would be out in the public domain for people to begin to debate and think about. And he could begin to sort of shape um, the, the discussion about how or whether this Israeli-Palestinian issue could be resolved. And I think he also felt he had one more shot at this. And he chose to give a speech in May. <clears throat> in fact, two speeches, as it turned out. And it was a real disappointment, certainly to me, because instead of putting forward a fairly detailed outline of what the United States <clears throat> thought was a reasonable basis for an Israeli-Palestinian settlement, he really uh, spoke in generalities with the exception of one point where he repeated what most other presidents have said, that the 1967 lines should serve as the reference point for uh, defining the future borders between Israel and Palestine. And he used a formula that the 1967 lines with mutually agreed swaps. Um, that's not exactly new, but it was the, the phrase that got the most attention. And of course, we saw what happened. The <coughs> Israelis rejected uh, this very strongly, and the president somewhat backed down in his second speech he actually said, well, it doesn't exactly mean that they're going to have to withdraw to 1967 and so forth. So I think we've kind of run out of steam. The speech didn't break any new ground. It didn't move things forward. Um, his special envoy, George Mitchell, had, has resigned, uh, which is something that I, I thought was probably overdue. He wasn't achieving anything. Uh, but he hasn't been replaced. Um, Hillary Clinton hasn't come out. She sent uh, her, her, I guess, as her stand-in, or as the president's spokesman, uh, Dennis Ross, who is, as I mentioned in the article, famous as Mr. Process. He never focuses very much on the substance of what needs to be done, but he tries to just keep kicking things down the road. So I think we're in a phase now where expectations are very low, uh, the speech didn't move us forward, and everybody's now beginning to say, well, something's going to happen in September. That's the new focal point. And I suppose something might happen in September at the UN. Uh, Palestinians want some kind of a move in the United Nations to see if they can get support for the concept of statehood. And of course, the Israelis and, and therefore the, the Americans are saying no. So I think we're at a dead end. I just think the whatever uh, slight hope there was that momentum might be uh, reestablished with strong American political leadership seems to be gone. We're drifting into an American re-election year, which um, has already really started. It's, uh, and that has a paralytic effect on uh, American politics on, on, the, on the Middle East. The president's just going to freeze up, try to get through the election without doing anything too controversial that might cost him support. Um, and I suppose we won't really get back to serious Arab-Israeli diplomacy until um, sometime in 2013, if then.